Hey, what's up? Welcome to my complete guide to the Doomsday Beast fight in Honkai Star Rail. In this guide, we'll be covering how to fight this boss, and what types of characters you want to use. There are two ways you can fight this boss. First is in the story, and secondly as an Echo of War to farm trace material, relics, and a possible light cone. Traces are an important upgrade for characters in Honkai Star Rail that give the characters new passives to upgrade their strength. The Doomsday Beast drops Destroyer's Final Road, an important material for leveling up the traces of the Physical Trailblazer, March 7th, Don Heng, Himiko, Welt, Asta, Tingyun, Erda, and Arlen. Many of these traces are important for a character to truly work, so you'll definitely have to kill this boss multiple times if you use any of these characters, which, let's be real, you most likely will. The boss also drops some useful light cones, which are Quid Pro Quo, Armada, River Flows in Spring, Past and Future, Wolf Walk Time, what a name, and the Seriousness of Breakfast, as well as the Thief and Musketeer sets, which eventually you can even drop as 5 stars later on once you get to a higher equilibrium. You can fight bosses up to 3 times a week total, so you might be fighting this boss more or less often based on how many of the trace materials you need for your characters. When you initially fight them in the story, you'll be using the Trailblazer, March 7th, Don Hung, and Himiko. The boss's right arm is weak to fire and ice, left arm is weak to fire and wind, and the middle core is weak to physical and fire. You probably notice that all three are weak to fire, so Himiko will be extra valuable here, also with the fact that she has so much damage in an area. You'll probably be splitting focus with your characters as well a bit, where Dan Hung will be hitting the enemy that's weak to wind. Himiko will be probably using her AoE mostly on the middle to hit both adjacent targets. March 7th will be using her shield to help allies, or possibly hit the one on the left. And the Trailblazer will mostly be attacking the one in the middle as well with her area attack. You can't target the boss until you kill all three parts. When you beat in the three parts, the boss will fall down and be unable to move. And when you deplete its health bar, it'll go into its second phase, which is mostly the same. However, its core has some new skills. There doesn't seem to be much rush once the boss has fallen down as well, as I've always done all of its health bar before it gets back up. So no need to waste your ultimates or skills, you can just prepare for the next phase. The right arm deals imaginary damage and is able to imprison your team, while the left arm deals quantum and can entangle you. The middle horror at first is only able to deal a bit of area damage and buff the other two hands, but in the second phase it can restore the toughness of two hands and has a large area damage attack after it charges for a turn. Breaking the toughness of the core will also stop this attack, or you could create a shield or heal before the attack hits to make sure you'll survive. I recommend focusing the right arm in the first phase because being imprisoned wastes so much of a character's turn. In the second phase, I recommend focusing the middle because its area attack impending doom really hurts. Overall, the boss is fairly easy and you don't really need much protection for your team and can kind of rush it down. When fighting the boss at a later time through the Echo War system, the boss is basically the same as before, just with an inflated health pool, toughness bar, and some more increased damage. The same strategies as before apply, the main difference would be that your team is probably completely different than when you first fought it in the story as you've probably obtained more characters and may have changed the makeup of your comp. When bringing characters in, I just recommend fire characters as both its arms and its core are weak to them. and possibly bring at least one healer or shielder. As long as three to four of your characters are able to exploit the boss's weaknesses, then I think it'll be fairly easy for you to beat. That's all for now, I hope this video helped you in some way. Don't forget to like the video or subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next time.